So after my last couple of videos regarding my recent upgrades to a 5800 X3D and a 4080 Super, a couple of you in the comments suggested I look into undervolting the 5800 X3D. So I figured I'd go on a little bit of a side quest and see what it's all about and share the results with you here. So why are we doing this? Well, three reasons. Firstly, heat. Less voltage to achieve the same frequency means less heat. It also means less power draw, which can save on your power bill. And finally, gaming performance. By allowing your CPU to run cooler, it can therefore boost higher, which can lead to more performance. If you're just considering copying what I did, do so at your own risk. I take no responsibility should anything break on your system or you void any warranties, and I certainly can't offer you any tech support. Also, keep in mind that what works for my system might not work for you, given variations between chips, motherboards, etc. Do your own research and proceed at your own risk. So the goal here is to undervolt the CPU. In general, the higher the clock frequency on your CPU, the more voltage required. So I'm going to undervolt my CPU such that those clock frequencies can still be hit without using as much voltage. Though if you undervolt too much, your system may become unstable. So it's, it's a little bit of a balancing act. I have a MSI motherboard and can undervolt my 5800X3D through my BIOS. If my motherboard didn't support this, I would have to use a, a Windows application, something like a PBO2 tuner. Um, so the things I settled on for now is a negative 30 on the curve optimizer with PBO limits of 100 on the PPT, 70 on the TDC and 100 on the EDC. I don't really consider myself an overclocker, so these settings were a result of a, a lot of digging, a lot of trial and error. So if you think you know better, chances are you do. Leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. So all of the games that we're gonna test, I ran at 1080p on my 5800X3D with my 4080 Super with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 CL16 memory on a MSI B550A Pro motherboard. Right, that's enough uh, preamble, let's dive into some game benchmarks. So first things first, I tried Cyberpunk on the ultra ray tracing setting and to be honest, there was nothing much in it. In fact, I was starting to worry as I'd spent loads of time benchmarking and it looked like the undervolt made things worse. So the complete opposite of what we were going for. And of course, I then worried that all the other games, once I kind of lined up the footage, would also look terrible. Um, so this wasn't a good start, and this did remain consistent throughout the benchmark run here. However, switching it up to the medium preset, and you can see that the undervolt is now having the desired effect consistently outperforming the 5800X3D. And by the end of the benchmark run, the averages on the undervolted CPU we're around eight to nine FPS higher. The 1% lows were around three FPS higher and the 0.1% lows were eight FPS higher, all while running around four degrees cooler and drawing less power, so a great result. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5 on the Ultra preset, you can see the undervolt is having the desired effect, not massive gains, like we're only talking about five FPS on the averages and the 1% lows, but look at those 0.1% lows, they're much, much nicer. It's strange though, on this one, the temperatures and the power draw didn't seem to have that much of a difference between the stock and the undervolted, um, especially relative to what we just saw in the Cyberpunk benchmark. Moving over to F123 on the ultra high preset, on the undervolted 5800X3D, you can see it's off to a great start. Better FPS across the board, lower temps, less power draw. Um, my smart meter will be delighted. So I thought I'd give Diablo 4 a try, but it's it's a tricky one to benchmark, not least because there's no built-in benchmark, at least that I'm aware of. And in between tests, the time of day can change, which is kind of a pain. Also, monsters can spawn differently, so it's quite hard to get a like-for-like -like run. But whatever, I thought I'd include it. You can make your own minds up and look at the footage for yourselves. As we get towards the end of the benchmark run, there's not a huge amount in it in the averages, but we are running cooler and we are running with less power on the undervolted 5800X3D. And also look at those 0.1% lows, they're much, much better. Although in fairness, I mean, that almost looks like it could be an outlier, whether that would be repeatable or not, I don't know. Finally, we're gonna look at Call of Duty Warzone 3. I've got to say, I was quite surprised slash disappointed by this one. The undervolt just seems worse. I mean, it is running a little bit cooler, but look at my FPS, what's going on? And the GPU utilization seems consistently lower on the undervolted 5800X3D. So I hope you found this interesting. I feel in some ways it's a little bit of a, a mixed 
bag. The ray tracing ultra mode on Cyberpunk didn't seem to favour the Undervolt, and neither did Call of Duty Warzone 3, which honestly surprised me, as Warzone being a big battle royale game with lots to keep track of, it can become bogged down on the CPU front. And going into this, I kind of hoped slash expected that we would see some good gains here. And it's also my understanding that ray tracing can add extra load onto the CPU. So again, I was surprised to see Cyberpunk in the ray tracing ultra mode not benefit from the undervolt. Especially as if you look back at the footage, it wasn't like we were at 99% on the GPU either. Let me know um, if you've got any theories at all as, as to why this is. Um, I'm more than open to trying new settings in the BIOS. I don't consider myself locked into these current settings. They're, they're simply the best ones I've stumbled upon so far. Again, leave me a comment and let me know if you've got any thoughts on any of this stuff at all. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you very much for watching. Get subbed for more content. Hit that like button. It really helps the video and the channel a ton. Until next time, take the very best care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.